Hey guys, and welcome to another MDO Compositions tutorial. Now, this time we are going to cover once again a rather exciting topic, actually, and it is um, lighting with lamps. Now, um, the reason for that is that our next tab basically would be the world uh, would be the world properties, and you can see ambient occlusion, environment lighting, and indirect lighting, and those are, in my opinion, um, slightly advanced lighting techniques. And in order to cover them, I thought it would be clever to f beforehand cover uh, the basic lamp, uh, the basic lighting setups with lamps. Okay, or just um, yeah, we'll just discuss what the lamps are all about, um, what kind of lamps there are, what types, and yeah, about all the different settings. Um, okay, so yeah, let's just delete the default cube and let's add a plane. Let's scale the plane up. Let's then move our um, our lamp so it is just above the plane, like this, approximately in the center. Let's just move it down a little bit, okay. Now, let's just go to top view. Let's hit Control alt 0 to position our camera. And we can actually leave it like this. Let's just scale up the plane so it actually fills out our whole camera view. And now let's hit F12. And you can see you get this white bright dot and then kind of a fall off, okay? And what, what, what it's actually rendered is quite simple. It rendered this lamp illuminating um, this plane and therefore, um, because this is a point lamp that kind of evenly um, casts light into every direction, okay? like a light bulb, for example. Um, and yeah, if we go back to our render with F11, um, what you can see here is this is the specular reflection, okay, which you can influence with the uh, specularity in the uh, materials tab. We will talk more about this um, within the next few tutorials. And then you can see the diffuse shading, which kind of has a fall off, okay, so towards the outer area, it kind of starts to fade out. Okay. Now, um, of course, you can adjust all those settings. And up here, you can see you've got a different set of tabs, a different set of properties, okay? So that just proves that this those properties are context sensitive. So if you right click on your plane, you can see you've got um, a whole bunch of, 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 of property tabs. And if you select your lamp, um, it, you no longer have that many. Um, and you can see this new tab here that appeared those are the lamp properties or whatever you call them um, I call them lamp properties and you can see you have quite a couple of options here um, and the first one is let's just minimize the others the first one is called preview okay and in this little window here you can actually see a preview um, on how your lamp is supposed to look after it is rendered um, or, or what kind of light it costs, but this is not very accurate, so don't count on it. Um, it's, yeah, it's just a very, very rough, um, uh, yeah, very rough uh, idea of, you just get a very rough idea on how the lamp is going to look, or the light that it costs. Because, also important, lamps are not really being rendered themselves, okay? Just the light they cost, the lamp itself is not being rendered. If you want to create like a light bulb, you have to um, add a separate object that actually acts as the bulb itself, okay? Then the second thing is actually in this tab or in this sub tab, you can actually choose what kind of lamp it's supposed to be. We have point lamps, sun lamps, spot lamps, hemi lamp um, from hemisphere and area lamps, okay? Or area lights rather. Um, and then you, let's talk more about those other lamp types in a second. Um, then you've got like the, the color, okay? So your lamps, um, your lamp can cost whatever light you want. It can be, you can see the color wheel, it can be a red light, a green light or a blue light or whatever you want. So in our case, let's go with a slightly orangish light like the sun. Now if we hit F12, you can see it changed quite a bit. So what do we do? First of all, we change the color but it also looks less intense now. That's because I moved um, the, uh, the lamp up a little and therefore it's no longer that 
intense. The light um, actually hitting the plane is no longer that intense. Okay, and um, yeah, you can see it still fades off towards um, the outside, but yeah. And then the second thing is actually the energy. Um, yeah, you can set the energy from, I'm not really sure, from 0 to 10 apparently. But you can sometimes also force those values. So if you hit 50, you can see it also accepts 50. But um, yeah, usually 1 to 10 is just fine. So let's hit uh, change this to, let's say, 5, which is also already quite a high value. Now if we hit F12, you can see it is very outblown, way too bright, basically. But, you know, maybe you want to go for that kind of look. If you need, like, a texture of a sun or something, why not? Um, okay, then the next thing is the fall-off. And as the name already implies, this kind of adjusts um, the fall-off of your lamp. So, um, yeah, if you if we go to the front view, this lamp is actually casting light, and therefore you have, like, the fall-off in all directions. So the closer an object, obviously, the uh, the more light it receives, the further away, um, the less. And there are a few options here. You've got constant, which means there's no fall off. So if we hit constant, and then if we render this, you can see everything is just... Oh, actually, let's decrease the energy down to um, 1 again. And you can see... Um, it's evenly lit. You do have here in the middle uh, like this this bright spot, but that's because of the specularity. And um, yeah, so constant means basically no fall off at all. Then we've got inverse linear, um, and inverse linear is quite funny. Um, well, basically it's quite simple. If you render this, you can see it's got like a fall off towards the outside. Actually, we need to um, put it down a little bit because it's kind of like too bright. Let me see. Yeah. Um, what it does actually, um, in the middle, you've got like 100% intensity and then it is divided by, by, by a certain number and it is 100% in the middle, then divided by two, three, by four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And as you might know, if you d divide something, um, by, by a certain number, it never reaches zero. Okay. So that's exactly what happens here. Um, your energy of your, the energy of your lamp never reaches zero. It becomes very, very weak but it never reaches zero. And yeah, as I said, it is like 100% then divided by two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. And there's also inverse square. And what that does, instead of divided by one, two, three, four, five, and so on, it divides by, um, actually, let's just render this real quick. And you can see um, the fall off is much stronger. And that's because instead of dividing it by one, two, three, four, five, and so on, it divides it by one, two, Actually, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, and so on, always at the square of the previous value. Yeah, and this is actually the more realistic kind of fall-off compared to the um, inverse linear one. Okay, and then you can also make your custom curve. And if you check custom curve, you can see you've got an additional sub-window down here. And here you can actually freely create the curve you want. You can, whenever you click on the line, you can see um, you can just add points and you can create the weirdest falloff types there are. Okay, with this you could actually um, light the panda <laughs> or whatever. And then you can see you get this very weird result. Now this is not something you usually want because uh, yeah, it's just it's just not very realistic but you know as an artist you are free to do whatever you want so if this kind of fits your needs by all means use it okay now the distance what this does um, it actually creates a sphere uh, a virtual sphere around your 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 um, uh, around your point light and it says all the light that is outside this sphere is no longer displayed, it's completely black, okay? So, um, let's go back to inverse linear. And let's scale up or plane some more. Let's go to zero. Actually, let's go to seven um, to reposition our camera. Now let's scale it, uh, zoom out a little bit. Uh, by the way, if your um, 
plane disappears, then that means that it's outside the range of your camera. Then you just have to go into the camera settings whilst your camera is selected and you have to increase under clipping, you have to increase the end. Okay, so let's put it to 200 just to be sure. Okay, and now if you render this, you can see as before your lamp, um, the, the light it costs and um, the fall off. Now if we go to, and you can also see no matter how far away from the center, it's never really black, okay? It's, it gets weaker and weaker, but it's never really black. That's important. But now, if you actually want it to be black, you can just um, check sphere. And now, after a distance of 30 blender units, it will be pitch black, okay? And um, by the way, one of those, let me just go to orthographic view with numpad 5. One of those squares is one blender unit in square, okay? So one blender unit, one blender unit, and so on. So 30 blender units, oh, by the way, we have we have eight of those squares per side. So one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which means 30 is about right there. So it should be cut off. It, it should be cut off. Actually, it's right there because you even have a sphere um, implying where it is. Because you can increase and decrease it. Let's go with uh, 30. Okay, now if we render this, you can see um, it is kind of um, pushed together. So it, it f and then it just it's just cut off um, around here where where it meets this this border um, where thirty blend units are reached. Okay, now let's just uncheck sphere and let's put the distance to uh, let's just leave it at thirty. Okay, now the next cool thing, and this is really funny, is um, negative. You can get your lamp to emit um, black light, or actually to emit shadows, so to say. Okay, so let's just duplicate this. Let's move it over there. Let's put it down a little bit. And let's actually check negative. Okay. And now if you go to, uh, if we press F12, you can see, instead of emitting light, it actually emits a shadow, and it kind of blocks the light coming from here, which is pretty cool. And you can also see over here you once again have a little bit of light from this from this um, light source over here. So it's really just it is a light source, but instead of actually casting light, it costs negative light, which um, for artistic purposes can most certainly be useful. Okay, then the next thing is this layer only, pretty self-explaining. You just let's just add a cube. Let's put it like somewhere over here. Doesn't really actually. Let's delete this lamp. We don't need it anymore. Let's move it over here somewhere. Let's move it down like this, and let's just with M. Let's move it to the second layer. Now let's let's um let's render this. Actually, I have to um activate both layers, F12, and you can see um your cube is being rendered. It throws a shadow and it is illuminated perfectly. Now, if we go to this lamp and we check this layer only, then that just means that it will only illuminate um, objects on this layer. So now if we hit F12, you can see this object is basically not considered at all. It's pitch black, it, it is not being illuminated, and it doesn't throw a shadow. But if we move it back to the first layer, you can see now it actually does, although um, this layer only is still checked because it is now the same layer. Okay. And now, um, to explain to you the next thing, I think it would be handy to just delete this cube and to add a UV sphere. And that to make it a bit smoother, um, without actually using any of the modifiers just now, because we are going to cover them in a later tutorial. Uh, therefore, let's just increase the number of segments and rings, okay? Because as I told you before, whenever you add an object, you get a context menu. And you can make a few um, basic adjustments before even starting to work on the sphere. So let's just put uh, change this to 64 and this to uh, 32, just twice the amount. Okay, you can see it's much smoother now. And then let's just um, hit smooth shading. You can see now we have a more or less smooth um, sphere. Now let's just make sure that it is actually below our lamp so we can see the specular reflection. Let's go to zero and then let's zoom in. Actually, let's reposition our camera completely.
here we go. Okay, now if we render this, you can see the sphere, a pitch black shadow. Um, I'll show you what to do about that in a second because this is really, or just um, during this tutorial because this is very unrealistic. And you can see um, your sphere is basically lit in two, in two ways, or it's, um, yeah, you've got like a diffuse reflection and you've got a specular reflection, okay? Um, and to illustrate the difference here, let me just real quick um, open GIMP and let me illustrate that with my graphics tablets much easier. Okay, so let's say you have like a light source over here, okay? And this light source is obviously emitting light. Now you have a surface like from a sphere or something over here. And now those rays, and you have like a camera. Let's just draw it in the same style as it is um, done in Blender. Somewhat like this. Okay, now those rays over here, they kind of hit the surface, okay? And then they... Um, are being reflected in the same angle, so something like this, okay, might not be very accurate, but anyway, this angle is the same angle as this one, okay, let's call it alpha, doesn't really matter. Um, and therefore, if this is a very bright source, and this is a very a shiny object, you can see kind of a, re a reflection going on here, okay. Um, and Blender actually differs, um, or yeah, for Blender, um, those reflections and diffuse reflections are kind of a different thing, but in reality it's really very similar. It's just that, let's just say we have like, um, we zoom in here, quite close up, and you will then find something like um, the surface is not being very, very smooth, okay? It can never be perfectly smooth. So you've got something like, I don't know, this probably, something like this. Okay, and if those rays hit this, then they are reflected to over there and to over there and into every direction. And therefore, um, you get this overall diffuse color. Okay, and therefore you, you can break it down to specular reflections, which are really um, the rays being directly reflected into the camera and this diffuse reflection that just um, comes from rays that are scattered to everywhere, into every direction, okay? And that's the difference between specular and um, a diffuse. And actually, um, the specular reflection is pretty much the exact same thing as a mirror, okay? It's just that because the material is not smooth enough, um, because it's not smooth enough, it actually doesn't really give you a mirror, not really an image, a clear image, but just this, this, uh, this blurred specular reflection, okay? And as you might guess, if something is very shiny, very very polished, and it emits all the light nearly as an image, as a perfect um, mirror, like a perfect mirror, then it cannot really have any diffuse reflections because you only have like 100% of light, okay? And if all the light is being um, reflected as a specular reflection or as, as a mirror, then you that means just means that the surface is even in this... Um, this close-up is very, very smooth, okay? And therefore, you don't really have the diffuse part. Uh, the diffuse part of the image. Uh, yeah, I hope that made sense. If you have any questions, just uh, just post it in the comments. So let me just pause the recording and let me go back to Blender. Okay, now where were we? Yeah, exactly. Now you can either go into the material properties and in the material properties over here you can actually um, yeah I'm gonna show you that in one of the next tutorials but you could actually um, decide whether this or how much um, diffuse shading this sphere has and how much specular shading and and even the mirror effect and so on however you, however, you can also do that with lamps okay but um, you can see specular and diffuse now, if both are jacked, if if both are jacked, that just means that <coughs> every object illuminated by this lamp 
um, gets a specular and a diffuse shading effect if they also have those enabled in the materials properties, okay? Now if we, for example, disable the uh, specular, and let's just once again take a look at our previously rendered image, you can see this is like the specular reflection, and the whole thing is like the diffuse reflection. Now if we hit F12, you can see that specular point, that specular reflection basically is gone. Now if we recheck that, and if you uncheck diffuse, you can see, you can only see the specularity now. And the same obviously also applies for um, for uh, the uh, for the plane, and therefore, um, everything's pitch black except for those two specular reflections. Now, let's just um, escape, hit escape, and then let's just recheck the fuse. Um, yeah, and that is basically it for this sub-tab. So let's just um, get into the shadows. Now, I think I'm going to um, once again switch to GIMP because I also need to give you a, a bit of basic theory for shadows. Now, I'm pretty sure most of you guys already know those things, but um, yeah, you can just skip ahead. Okay, now, shadows. Let's say we've got two dif different cases here, okay? We've got light, like, here we've got a, a light source, a very tiny one, like a light bulb or something. And then we've got a sphere over here. And then we've got, like, a wall just behind it, okay? And just for uh, presentation purposes, let me just um, draw that wall in a slightly three-dimensional way, okay? Or the whole scene, actually. Now what happens? We've got those light rays, okay, and they kind of um, go from here to over here, and from here to over here, okay. And then, as you might guess, we've got like a shaded area over here, because uh, this is a sphere, by the way, not. Okay, my drawing's not not real great just now, and. Then you've got a very harsh shadow because you only have one point of light, uh, one point where the light is emitted from, and then you've got like the lit area all around it, okay? And then you have a second case. Let's say you have actually instead of just a point, you've got like an area like this. Then you have your sphere, and then you've got your background. The light rays come from over here. to like over there, then from over here to like over there, um, and then from over here to over there, and from over here to over there, like this, okay? And now what we actually have, we have like, um, we have like a core, a, a, a core area, okay? Um, being like over there and in this area it's a perfect shadow the sh shadow is pitch black okay unless you have some other kind of light source around it but if not then it's just pitch black and of course there's also always a little bit of light scattering okay but let's just um yeah and then you've got this this middle area over here where your shadow is is yeah because it's it's obvious okay you have like the rays from over here, or from over here, they don't reach this point because uh, the object's in the way. But the the rays from over here, they actually reach um, the plane behind this sphere, okay? And therefore, you can get kind of a gradient effect, okay? Um, here on the board, you have 100% one, of illumination, and on this board, you have like um, 0%. And then you have like a fall off in between. And therefore, in this area, you get a soft shadow, okay? Now, theoretically, with a point lamp, um, that effect should not be, cannot be achieved. However, in Blender, um, the lamps are only there to, um, yeah, as a technical thing, and therefore you can also use point lamps to cast soft shadows, okay? So the artist can do whatever he wants. Okay, now let me just switch back to Blender once again. Okay. Now... Under shadow, you have, first of all, um, two choices. Either no shadow, 
Now if you hit F12 you can see there's no shadow being calculated and you can also see you have no idea where this sphere really is. Is it close to the ground or is it up high? You have no idea. Or you choose ray shadow, okay? And there are actually two types of shadows. There are buffer shadows and ray shadows. However, only spot lamps can generate um, buffer shadows. Therefore, we will go with ray shadows. And now if you have 12, you can see you've got your shadow back. Um, however, um, actually in this scenario, this would be quite a realistic shadow because you can see it is a very harsh shadow and we've got like a point lamp, so it's not really possible to get a soft shadow. However, um, in reality, you never have a light source that is just at one exact spot, okay? Even light bulbs have like uh, that long thin metal thing in it. I'm not quite sure what that is in English. And it emits light over a certain area and therefore you also get soft shadows. And you can fake that here um, with this part, okay? Now, um, actually, let me first of all show you those things up here. You can just change the color of your shadow, okay? You can say my shadow is now being, uh, it's now going to be, let's say, blue, dark blue. Now, if you render this, you can see your shadow is suddenly blue. Um, it's not a great idea to color your shadows because you can see the backside of your of your cube, uh, of your cube, of your sphere is still still being pitch black, okay? Um, and therefore, you need some other way to change the color of your shadows instead of actually changing it here. Okay, but just so you know that you can do it, as I said, as an artist, you might um, have need for the weirdest things sometimes. Let's just put that back to um, black. Okay, and um, then you have, once again, this layer only, which means, let me just demonstrate that, let's just duplicate this sphere to over there. Now let's go to zero. Let's just move that back a little, a little bit. Okay. Let's just move this one to the um, second. Let's move this sphere back to the first layer. Then let's select both of them. Okay. And now if you render this, you can see I'm now going to check this layer only. Now if you render this, you can see one sphere does cast a shadow, the other one doesn't. However, both lamps are il uh, both sphe both spheres are illuminated because um, this layer only is only checked in the shadow panel, not in the lamp panel. Okay, um, and the next thing is only shadow. If you check that, um, then this lamp is only going to cast shadows, and it will no longer illuminate things. Okay, so right now, if we do that, you can see it's going to be pitch black. However, if you have a second light source over there, and that one does not have this checked, and let's also um, uncheck this layer only for the first lamp. Now we have we have one lamp that's only going to cast shadows, and another lamp that's only uh, that it just does, does both. Okay, so if we hit F12, you can see you you got two shadows. Um, actually, let me just see something. Uh, let's re-render this. Okay, now you can see um, you've got two shadows per um, per sphere, but you only have um, one lamp illuminating those spheres. Now I'm not quite sure why this shadow over here has like this brownish reddish color, and this one doesn't. But I guess it's because it is. Um, the plane is also being illuminated at the same time by the second lamp. And therefore you get this um, weird effect. Uh, anyway, not something you usually use anyway. So, um, yeah, let's just delete this first lamp because this one has the modifications. And, yeah. Okay, now, about the sampling. Usually you can see soft size. And this actually defines how soft your shadow is going to appear. Now, one is actually already um, softer than zero, okay? Zero would be completely harsh, one is softer. But if you look at your render, you can see the shadows are completely sharp. And that's because of the samples. You have to turn the samples up. Let's put them, put the number in here like five, F12. 
and you can see now we actually have smooth shadows. But as you can see, they are very, very grainy. So in order to change that, you have to increase the samples. And in our case, let's go with 15. I think 15 is also quite a good number. Actually, 12 should be enough. 12. You can see it takes more time to render, uh, quite a bit more time. And But you can also see the result is way better, but it's not enough. Let's go with, I don't know, um, 18. You can see now we have 4.84 seconds. If we um, increase the samples by 6, you can see we get quite a difference. Nine point five nine. Okay, so you can see um, increasing the samples is um, is an uncomfortable task because you know that it will increase the render times by quite a lot, but sometimes it's necessary. Uh, yeah, let's put them back to five for now, or actually no, let's put them back to eighteen. Okay, now you can see nine point five nine seconds, and right now we are using adaptive QMC, and uh, QMC stands for I believe quasi Monte Carlo um, distribution or something and it's just a way to distribute something I'm not really sure what it is anyway um, with adaptive you actually have a threshold so if you increase that to let's say right now you have 9.5 let's increase it to 0.1 if now if we, hit, if we hit f12 it should take less time because it doesn't have to be as accurate as before And as you can see, we did save a bit of time. It's not, it's not a lot, but it's yeah, it's a start. And now if we set this to constant QMC, now it's no longer adapting. So that means we need more time. And it's quite a lot of time we need. Let's just see how long that is. Okay, and you can see it's nearly twice as much as before. So, um, yeah, usually you want to use adaptive QMC unless you have like a very specific case, but I always use adaptive if possible. Um, now, the other thing you can change is the soft size, okay? So, the, the, the higher the soft size, um, the smoother your shadows, the lower the sharper. So, if we um, change that to like, let's say, 10, which is quite an extreme number. Now if we hit F12, actually let me just uh, put that back to adaptive. F12. And you can see this is a really, really soft shadow, okay? So usually not something you want because this is way too soft, but actually the default one is quite okay, I believe. Okay, now that's basically already it for the point lamp. Um, yeah, now let's move on to the next lamp. And one thing to note is that this first part stays for all the lamps more or less the same, okay? So you can see, um, for example, the sun does not have to fall off. For the spotlight, it's nearly identical. For the hemisphere light, it is without fall off and the rest is the same for this upper area and for the area lamp you also have distance and gamma um yeah now as let me just delete those two spheres let's go to front view and let's actually just line up all the, all, all the um, lights next to each other so this that's how a, a point lamp looks in your 3d viewport let's select the first one let's go up here let's change all those values to zero so it is no longer being rotated and now let's just duplicate it five times. Okay, now let's change the first one to be a sun, spot, hemi, and area. Okay. Now, you can see certain similarities here. Um, the point lamp has like no kind of... Um, let's just take all of them and rotate them, rotate, them, rotate them a little bit around the x-axis. Okay, now you can see all of those lamps have this gray line going 
to the um, to the grid, okay? And that's just to indicate where they are because in the 3D space, without that, you wouldn't really know where it is. And this way, you know exactly where it is on this grid floor. Now, except from that, this lamp, the point lamp, does not have any other kinds of indication to where it faces, okay? And that's because it isn't really important because the point lamp just illuminates everything around it. Now, the sun lamp doesn't really. The sun lamp casts light from one direction, okay? However, important, it does not matter where your sun lamp is, okay? This sun lamp illuminates this plane and everything in this scene in the exact same way whether you position it over here or over here or over here, okay? Because it's the sun, okay? Um, the sun is always illuminating everything. Just di the direction is important because of the shadows, okay? Let's just reposition that with control set. And then we've got our spot lamp. Um, the spot lamp is also quite, let's just scale it down so we can actually see what it does, is also quite um, obvious. It actually um, illuminates your scene as a spotlight does in the circus or in on stage or whatever. It just, um, yeah, it, it throws a few rays of light in this into this cone, so to say. Okay, th that's the cone of illumination, and um, yeah, it's quite cool. You can adjust quite a few things. Um, so yeah, that's your spot lamp, and then you also have your hemi lamp. Okay, and as you can see, similar to the sun lamp, it does not matter where you position it. You can position it wherever you want. It only always casts light onto the scene from this direction. However, additionally, it is also not so important how it is rotated because it does not really cast any shadows, okay? So the hemi lamp is supposed to um, simulate a cloudy day, like a sky that is very cloudy that gives a very even lighting where you cannot really see a lot of shadows. And um, yeah, however, if you have like an object in your scene, and we'll see that shortly, it is, it does change uh, a bit on how you position your uh, hemi lamp because it will darken or lighten up certain areas of your model, but it will not cast any shadows. And then finally, we have the aerial light, okay? And if you zoom in, you can see you actually have kind of a plane, okay? And the aerial light simulates a plane emitting light. You can scale it up or down. And you can also make it a rectangle and then change the aspect ratio and so on. That is your um, aerial lamp. Okay, now let's talk about the sun lamp first. So let's just delete all the others. Let's move it over here and let's just with Shift C reposition our 3D cursor and with Shift A let's add a monkey head. Let's move it up, let's rotate it around the x-axis and let's go to Control Alt Zero. Um, like this, so let's just move it down a little bit. R 45X. Oh, actually, I already did that, didn't I? Yeah, anyway. Um, and let's make sure that our lamp actually casts a shadow in a nice direction. So something about like this. This is perfect. Now if we hit F12, you can see uh, your, mom, your monkey casts a shadow. Um, it's very, a very harsh shadow, very black, as always. Um, the light comes from this direction, and you have no kind no kind of fall-off towards the outside, so uh, very even energy values, so to say. Now, you, as always, you, this is the exact same part as in the point lamp, just that uh, with the sun lamp, you cannot adjust the fall-off because it doesn't have a fall-off. And then you have a few quite complex settings here. Okay, so you have sky and atmosphere. So with your sun lamp you can actually create a sky and an atmosphere that is then rendered onto your image. And if you check sky you can see this thing going on. And if we render this, F12, you don't really see a difference here, okay? So it doesn't really change the way your scene is lighted. However, if you change your camera's perspective um, to something around, let's just go to lock camera to view. Um, and if now we position it some, somewhat like this, and now if we hit F12, you can see 
what it actually does, it adds in a displend effect into the, the sky background, so it actually looks like a sky. Um, and there are quite a few adjustments you can make or you should make. Uh, let's just uncheck lock camera to view. Like for example, the turbidity, okay? So how turbid is your is your sky? And if you increase that value, you can see it, it gets kind of um, reddish, yellowish, because probably because the sun is supposed to be, be reflected in the atmosphere and therefore it gives off this kind of um, milkish, reddish touch. So if now you hit F12, you can see that's what we get. Um, let's just put that back to like, say, let's say five. Okay. Now this is not very realistic because you can see the background is kind of, yeah, as I said, like kind of m uh, mistish, uh, not mistish, just it looks as if there's a lot of mist, kind of like, um, s yeah, like smog or something, but the foreground is very clear. Okay, so we need to change that. Now, um, what you can also change, of course, is the uh, we'll change the, the um, mist issue in a second. You can also change the brightness, okay? So the higher the value, the brighter. However, after like, I'm not quite sure where it is, after about 1.3, 1.4, it gets unrealistic, okay? And if you have turbidity to 2.0, which is the minimum, and then everything above, like I think 1.21 or something. 1.2 is still okay, but everything above that kind of results in a weird behavior. Um, yeah, you can see it's. I don't really know why that is, but it just happens. So set it to so to a value below that, and now you can see it is brighter than before. So if you change it to like to one, you can see it is once again as it was in the beginning. And then spread. Now the horizon spread, I'm not quite sure what's that supposed to emulate or simulate, but um, if you increase it, you kind of like push the sun together and er everything becomes a bit more even and um, yeah, not so, um, the, uh, the sun is no longer that well um, visible, okay? Um, you, should you should just play around with those settings a little bit if you plan to use this for something, but um, yeah, it's quite cool. Let's put this back to one as well. Now the factor. That's just um, about how this is blended because this, this um, background is kind of blended onto or this this sky is kind of blended onto or yeah added onto the background. So you can set this from add to multiply or to screen or to whatever you want. Let's let's leave it at add or let's let's put it to mix actually. And then in the world settings, let me just see something. Oh, it doesn't make it. It doesn't make a difference. Okay, um, yeah, and this is just the way how it is um, added onto this background, and yeah, add is the add function is usually perfect. And the factor is just on how m how many times it is added, so to say. Um, let's just put this to one, actually. I think it does make a difference, though. Yeah, it does make a difference, depending on what is selected here. Um, but we will talk more about those world properties in the next tutorial. Okay, so, yeah. And now if you increase that factor you can see it becomes brighter and brighter because more and more color or more and more brightness is added onto the background if you go to multiply for example you can see it doesn't really do anything which is a good thing because we already have like um, a black background okay and black background basically means a value of zero okay now if we multiply that value of zero with um with anything really it becomes zero once again which is quite obvious and uh, yeah, no matter what you, by the way, as a general thing, if you have like, let's say something lighter, something like over here, like a gray, and now if you multiply this, it will always become darker, although or actually our actual um, sky is lighter because um, white is like one and black is like zero. And if you have a gray value and you multiply it with, with something that is darker than white, let's say with um with uh, with a blue and that has like a value of let's say 0 
then you will also decrease the actual value of your outcome. So multiply is for darkening, add is for um, lighting up. Let's put that back to add. Now what this color space thing does, I'm not really sure about that. Let's actually put the um, background color back to black. Yeah, it kind of changes uh, the colors. Um, yeah, I'm not, but I'm not really sure what the technical background is here. Anyway, uh, SMPTE usually works just fine. And the exposure is also kind of a way to in increasing the, the brightness, okay? Then once again, brightness of the sun. Um, let's just actually darken the whole thing a little so we, ac we can actually see what you're doing. If you um, increase the brightness of your sun, then theoretically just the sun itself should be brightened up and the rest should stay the same, but it influences a little bit of everything. And then there's also the size of your sun, I believe. And the funny thing is, um, as you can see, the, the, the bigger the size, um, the smaller your sun gets, in a way. Uh, let's just um, position our camera so it actually faces directly into the sun, like this. Control, Alt, Zero. And now with um, G and middle mouse wheel, you can just drag it up until you can actually look right into the, um, into the sun. Move it over here. Okay, now theoretically it should directly um, make a render of the sun. But even now you can see... Oh, actually you can see it. Yeah, now this is your sun, okay? And now if you select the sun lamp and if you um, increase the size of the sun, and if you render this, you can see your sun became tiny. And if you decrease it all the way to, let's say, over here, you can see now your sun is like bigger, although not really. Um, yeah. Kind of a weird setting here, but uh, that's just what it does. And then backlight, this kind of defines... Um, it's kind of hard to describe. I'm not really sure what it is, but it gets the gift gives you this effect. Right now it looks like this, and if you decrease all the way to zero, you can see... Um, you, you can barely even see the sun anymore. So... At least actually it's minus one. Let's go to zero. Yeah, this is a very subtle change. And then, one last cool thing, let's just um, reposition our camera. Like this. And the last thing is um, atmosphere. Let's just select our camera. Actually, let's rotate this a little bit around the x-axis. So we can actually see the horizon still. Now, um, if we um, increase the rapidity once again to like this. You can see it looks as if the background is very um, cloudy, very misty or whatever. But the foreground is very, very clear. Now you can change that if you check atmosphere. And now everything, the whole scene is actually um, lighted up a little bit according to a value that you can set down here. And if now if you have 12 you can see it is no longer quite pitch black. I believe it's hard to say, um, but if you change those settings down here, you can you can make sure that it really isn't all that black. So you can set the sun to let's say two, and you can see now it's definitely no longer black. It's kind of a um, a more bluish color, I believe. And then you can also change the distance. So the higher the distance, um, this is basically this is by the way the distance um, of of the influence of the sun. So the higher distance, the more influence the sun has. Um, so if you change it all the way to 500, which is really extreme, you can see everything is just um, orangish, like in a sandstorm or something. But let's put that on a reasonable number of, let's say, 5. And then you get this result again. And now the higher the value of the sun, let's go put that one to 5, uh, the stronger the effect. Um, yeah. And there are also some other settings you can um, change to influence the outcome, like the in-scattering, which is basically kind of how it scatters. So if you increase that to, let's say, 5, 
you can see it's it's a very subtle change actually I don't even see exact oh you cannot <laughs> put it above one apparently if you put it to 0.5 it should actually decrease the amount of atmospheric then yeah you can see because now it doesn't scatter so much anymore in the atmosphere theoretically that's what it's supposed to um to um yeah to to do and extinction is kind of yeah how long it takes or how far it takes until um, that effect is ex extinct, so to say, so if you put that to zero, you can see everything is kind of bluish and weird. And if you put that to, let's say, 0 0.365, yeah, you can see what those changes do. So um, as I short, uh, as, as a summary, if you increase the sun value, your atmosphere effect is stronger. If you decrease it, is, it is um, more subtle. Same goes for the distance. The higher the distance, the more effect, the less distance, the less effect. In scattering is the same thing. The higher your in scattering value, uh, the more the effect, the less. If you put it to zero, for example, you can see it is once again pitch black. And um, it is exactly the opposite for extinction. And the lower the extinction value, the less effect uh, the, mo the more effect and the higher the extinction value, the less effect. Okay, so this is how you can set up a sky in an atmosphere without actually using a texture or anything like that. Um, especially if you want to make a short preview render, this is very handy. So keep that in mind because usually people forget. I usually don't remember as well because it's not something I use very often, but it's certainly a cool effect. Okay, then about the shadow, there's not much to say here, really. It's the exact same thing as with the point lamp. You have no shadow or ray shadow. You can select a color. Let's put it to, let's say, I don't know, red. You can uh, say it's only supposed to cast shadows in this layer or to cast only shadows and no light. We don't want that. Samples 18 is quite high. Let's put that back to 12 for now. Soft size of one is okay. Let's put it to 1.5 anyway. Um, let's stay with adaptive QMC because um, and the other one just takes too long. Threshold of 0 0.1 is okay as well. And now let's just hit F12 to render. And you can see that's how it looks. And one interesting thing here is th th the shadow is red. So that is obvious because we set it to be red. But you can see the monkey is partly red and partly black. And that's because um, this part, the, the black part of the monkey is kind of the backside. Um, relative to the, to, to, to the lights, the backside. And the backside is shaded black because no light is reaching, okay? This is not really a shadow. Um, and the other a areas where there's red, those are not really shaded from the um, um, from a diffuse shader, but they are actually shaded because of the shadow and therefore it's red, okay? It's a bit confusing. We can talk more about this uh, when covering the compositor but th because then you can see that shadows are actually multiplied onto um, your previous result and therefore if you multiply red over black um, yeah you, you will actually multiply zero with with something that will always get you black uh, yeah anyway that's a little bit how the sunlight works how the sun works exactly and um, yeah so that's that and let's just actually put that back to black come on and everything else is fine I guess uh, yep. Okay, now let's look, take a look at the next lamp. And actually, the spot lamp is probably the most complex lamp. And yeah, now the first part is pretty much the same once again. Okay, you've got like the color, the energy, negative, this layer only, specular and diffuse. The fall off is also the same. Let's move on to shadows. We have once again no shadow, as always. We've got ray shadow and we've got buffer shadow. And let's just make a render with a no shadow. And let's just set this up a little bit differently. Let's make it so that it actually casts light onto our monkey. Let's go to three. Like this. And let's just put it down a little bit. Okay. If we hit F12, you can see. Actually, let's zoom out a little bit. You can see you get this um, spot. Um, lighting going on here. 
as if your monkey would stay on a stage or on, on a theater stage or whatever. And um, you can see you have like this soft edge here. And everything inside is pre pretty evenly lit, okay? Now, what the falloff really does for the spot lamp is um, instead of actually blending it from the outer to the inside, here the light intensity is 100%, and the further away from the lamp, the, the, the weaker it gets, okay? And, um, yeah, that's basically it. Now, for ray shadows, we already know them. Once again, the exact same setup. If we hit F12, you can see you get a, sh a soft shadow. You can see the samples because of the, uh, th uh, of the um, low samples. Uh, you can see the um, the grains, the grain going on because of the low samples. Let's just put this back to 18. Let's see if that makes a difference. Uh, not really all that much. Um, yeah, it's now it's quite soft, and you can see it kind of matches now the um, the outside. But if we set this to one, and now if we hit F12, you can see it is a very sharp shadow. Although um, the co the end of this this um, of this circle is 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 quite soft, okay, and that's because you can change the soft size of the um, of the lamp um, circle separately with this uh, blend value, but more on that later. Now, um, everything else is pretty much the same. Now we also have buffer shadow, and buffer shadows are much faster to um, to to render. So let's go to ray shadow. Let's Set this back to let's say 18, okay, or let's say actually 12 is enough. 12, and now if we enter this again, you can see it takes us one second and 1.16 seconds. Now let's just put it back to 18. This is really grainy there, and it takes 2.22 seconds. Okay, this is good enough. Now if you go to buffer shadow, um. You can see the upper part is the same, only shadow this layer only and the color. That's the exact same as before. However, now you've got a few buffer types um, and filter type and sample buffers and so on. Now classical and classic halfway is kind of similar. Okay, if we hit F12 now, uh, you can see that's what it looks. And if we go to classic halfway, it looks pretty much the same. They're very similar. However, um, those two, as opposed to um, those two over here, cannot cast transparent shadows, okay? So those two can cast transparent shadows and those two cannot. Uh, yeah, now the filter type is kind of how um, your shadow is ca being calculated, okay? So let's just move the camera in a little bit, like this. And you can see this is not very a very clean shadow, okay? You've got lots of edges coming out and it's just not very smooth. Now, um, in order to change that, you can do a few things. First of all, you can change the filter size. So let's just change the filter size to Gauss. And now if we hit F12, you can see it looks pretty much the same, actually. You cannot really influence much with that, but um, yeah. Now the next thing you can change is soft and sample buffers. Now this sample here and that soft is very similar to this soft and this sample, okay? We have a soft of 3, however we have a sharp shadow because the sample is turned to 1. So if we increase that to let's say 9, which is the maximum. Uh, actually this is probably my fault, let me just see. Okay, it was already soft before apparently. Uh, let's put it back to 3. Yeah, that that's already its idea of a soft shadow, apparently. But you can see it's not very it's not very clean, and you can change that by um, increasing the size. Okay, so if you increase the size to let's say four thousand and ninety six, then it's supposed to become cleaner. Let me just see. Yeah, it's you can see it's uh, like more accurately interpolated, basically, but it still looks mm, far from perfect. Okay, now if you go to let's say a very high number of like, I don't know, 8192. Now if you F12, you can see it takes al already quite a bit longer to render. You can see now it's pretty smooth and it took 1.78 seconds. 
so yeah if you're okay with this result you can get away with 0 0.79 and that is definitely much faster than with the ray shadows um, yeah now you can also increase the samples of course to so let's say 5 for now and see what kind of difference and I can see it's much smoother it's much smoother but it also takes more time of course um, yeah so those are just the settings and the, what the bias exactly does I don't really know let's just let's do 0 points or let's just put that all the way to 5 yeah, you can see um, the shadow quality suddenly becomes horrible. It, it's just like an uh, approximation of the real shadow and just looks ridiculous. And if you put it all the way to 0 0.0001, you get the most accurate result. But apparently there are also a few issues because you can see that's not really what you want. So leave that at 1 for most of the time. But you can sometimes get a few issues. Then you just have to decrease its value so it's more accurate. Okay, and then um, auto clip start and auto clip end is just says where it's supposed to start um, casting shadows. So if you go to one, and now if we increase the, the start clip start to let's say somewhere around there, and now if we have twelve, you can see only this lower part actually casts a shadow because the upper part is completely being ignored by the lamp or by the shadow casting thing um, yeah that's basically it same goes for the end of course we can also decrease the end uh, that's too much to a very small area like something like this and now if we have 12 you can see you get some very weird results and yeah you're not supposed to do those things anyway and then one last thing, let's just put that back to zero and that too, I don't know, doesn't really matter. You can also change the spot shape, okay? Um, and that now this option is, um, uh, it's not important whether you have a buffer shadow, ray shadow, this works anyway, so let's go back to ray shadow. And now, first thing you can do, you can actually increase the size. And this is a bit confusing because 75 degrees is not really a size, this is an angle. But because, depending on the angle, the size of your spot changes is actually quite a good way to uh, yeah to do this so let's just change it to 120 degrees and you can see this angle is now 120 degrees and therefore a much bigger area is lit okay and now you can see um, you already get a, a, a slight gradient effect from here to to the outside because now the difference of distance between here and between here is actually quite significant um, okay and then one other thing is the uh, blend value okay if you put it all the way to zero you can see in the preview you get a very harsh end of the circle if you put it all the way to one you can see a very soft gradient effect so if you go to f12 right now you can see this is what you get okay quite cool and um, yeah now one other one one other thing you can do is you can uh, let Blender um, generate a halo, okay? And um, that's actually, it, it, it creates like a volumetric material for this for this cone and actually renders this cone, okay? So now if you have 12, you can see this is the worst perspective ever to display that. So let's just move back a little bit like this. And let's also change this size to, let's say, 60 degrees. Okay, now if you have 12, or if we just click render, you can see the halo is actually cast and you can see the halo. And then under intensity, you can just decrease that to, let's say, 0.2 to get, to get a less obvious and less outblown effect like this. Um, cool. What you also can do, you can, in, instead of uh, making Blender calculate um, a round spot shape, you can also make it a square spot shape, which then looks something like this. However, then you get this weird... Um, this weird thing here going on. I don't really like that. And you can also, in your 3D viewport, make it so that it actually shows the um, shows the cone. So you actually know what is actually illuminated by this and what isn't. Okay, it's much more um, obvious this way than without this. Okay, and you can also make it so it displays the square or this um, four-sided pyramid. Um, yeah, now we already exceeded one hour in the tutorial. 
or nearly and um, yeah let me just um, stop this here and let me just make a new tutorial for the remaining um, let me see for the remaining two lamps and then let me also in the next tutorial show you a few lighting setups like two-point lighting three-point lighting and those kind of things so um, thank you for watching if you have any kind of questions or ideas or whatever um, please post it in the comments um, yeah hope to see you next time and thank you for watching bye